Very good. Okay, so uh, you can direct your questions via the Q and A as usual. So the first already came in. Um, sort of a broad question here: Whether your results inform a complementarity between fiscal policy and prudential policies, and potentially advise a tighter coordination? <clears throat> um, yes. Yes and no. I mean, uh, number one is, of course, what we, I mean, this is um, a more very general remark. What we typically see during these crises is more coordination, right? I mean, we've seen it in uh, monetary policy and prudential policy, um, macro pro and micro pro. I mean, there's much more coordination going on during crisis situation. It's also necessary, of course. Um, <clears throat> and similarly, I mean, in the US, um, uh, I mean, there, there has been close coordination in these crisis uh, management programs uh, between the Federal Reserve and, uh, and uh, the federal government. Um, so that's on the one side. On the other side, of course, it's important for regulators to know um, how are these loans being used and whom are they being used for? I mean, who are, who are the, these, uh, 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 these funds being lent to because of financial, uh, of, um, uh, financial stability implications further down the road? Now, of course, if, the, uh, if all of the losses are ultimately being picked up by the, um, by the government, um, then that's all fine. But for example, if these are loan guarantees, such as we had them in Europe, uh, which is then uh, um, it's a guarantee only up to 80% or 75%, then of course there is a still a remaining risk, which then might stay on the on the bank's uh, uh, on the bank's books. And this has of course implications for uh, for potential authorities in their in their monitoring exercise. So I think um, there are two sides: um, coordination, yes. But then, of course, also careful monitoring afterwards and how these funds are being used. Mm -hmm. um, thanks. And then there's a question um, mm -hmm. related to the stronger results that you find generally uh, throughout the paper for exposure to lockdown policies as opposed to exposure to the COVID spread itself. Um, could this possibly be because uh, the lockdown index is? easier to observe uh, than the other one or that the two may somehow be correlated yes i mean so um on the correlation of course they are correlated um but they in many cases they end up both independently uh, uh and significant from each other so both end up significantly and we include them both so they're not there's not a perfect correlation um and yes one thing is of course the observability the met there's a measurement bias probably especially in the early days of the of the pandemic uh, the first quarter um, definitely, to a certain extent, maybe also the second uh, quarter, but also, I mean, interestingly enough, if you look at unemployment, so the ex how can we explain, uh, explain uh, variation in unemployment across counties and states, uh, both are significant to the same extent, so both can explain it. Um, maybe it is, um, uh, um, uh, in, in, when it comes to the banking system, um, that uh, lockdown measures um, may be affects um, uh, the, the, the loan book more, or maybe also the demand uh, for loans more. I mean, that, that would be my explanation, although I would have to think a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then there's a question by Francesca Barbiero, um, connecting basically back to Shepnam's paper, mm. who showed that because of this massive fiscal support, there haven't been so, there hasn't been so much corporate distress also over your period. So would you see any role for some latent exposure to credit risk deterioration in explaining the behavior of banks? I mean, coming basically from the demand side and the fiscal support. Well, I mean, this is a, this is a very, very general question now, right? And I think that's the what we've been discussing over the last 18 months. What happens, uh, is there a cliff effect when the fiscal support uh, goes away, right? How will banks react um, to fiscal support going away? Will they keep up the lending? Uh, will they stop it? Um, to which extent will they uh, recognize uh, losses if, if, if businesses get into trouble? Or to which extent will they try to throw good money after, after bad money? Uh, or good money after government money, let's put it this way. So I think that's going to be a, a big question. And I think that's um, uh, something to be uh, carefully uh, monitored over the next couple of months. Now, the, the stress test earlier this uh, in the summer seemed to have indicated that maybe our first or worst uh, fears um, 
haven't come true in the sense that um, maybe there's not as much corporate distress and therefore not as much potential distress on banks balance sheets that we had all feared. Um, but I think uh, the final jury is still out because um, on the one hand, um, I mean, you're coming out of the pandemic. OK, let's assume everything goes fine and lockdown is all done uh, in the spring. But of course, there is uh, there are supply chain uh, strains. Um, there is still reallocation to be had uh, across sectors. So I think there's a little bit more turmoil ahead. Um, and I think now I'm kind of going more normative rather than positive. So I don't have any numbers on that. but. I think it will be a, a challenge for uh, regulators and authority more generally to coordinate in the sense that uh, when, for example, fiscal support goes away, that regulators then also kind of force banks to recognize losses uh, when they have them. And uh, at the same time, to also allow um, uh, corporates to re restructure where it's necessary and where the firm is uh, viable. So there's kind of a multi pronged approach where lots of uh, uh, authorities have to coordinate. Um, um, in order to kind of uh, get out of the crisis both before uh, kind of the, the seed or the core for the next one is uh, being laid through zombie lending, for example. So that was a very general answer to a very specific question. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's fine. I think it sounds like uh, this is for another paper, right? A follow up <laughs> paper. Actually, related to that, did I understand correctly, Torsten, that you said that the syndicated loan analysis? Um, you had some data constraints there, so you had to answer in the second quarter because something was missing. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, the deal scan data seemed to have ended in uh, mid June or late June 2020. And we tried to tap another data source. Unfortunately, we couldn't match it uh, properly. That's why our data in this case ends there. Yeah. Okay, understood. Okay, well, great. Then uh, I don't see further questions, and we are. You, you put us a little bit back on track in terms of time. Thanks for that. So this brings us to the end of uh, today's conference, but uh, there is a second day tomorrow. So uh, please join us again then and uh, hope uh, you have a nice rest of the afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And uh, Torsten, I see you uh, later this week in Zurich indeed. Indeed. Uh, Carlo, any anything from you to add? No, just to thank you also on my side. It was a great session. And, uh... Uh, see you tomorrow all uh, at three. So today the starting uh, hours was at two, but tomorrow we have one hour more of uh, uh, work and uh, back. So see you all tomorrow at three. Thanks. Thank you.